Wow. So in short, let's review in about 25 seconds, try, <laughs> what we've learned over the, the past seven or eight year in. We've learned that it seems to be implied by the Raya Mahamna, which is part of the Zohar. Now when Mashiach comes, we're going to live off the tree of life. Unlike now, when we live our life, and we also learn Torah, which is connected to the tree of knowledge. So the Altar asked, what do you mean? The Torah is tree of life. Even the parts of the Torah which discuss uh, purity and impurity and things which are not so uh, purely, quote-unquote, uh, uh, holy and special, it's part of the Torah. And the entire Torah is holy. So the Altar of it was in, the, in the last class, we started to explain that when the when the Raya Mehemna makes a statement that when Mashiach comes, we're not going to have the Eitz Hadat anymore, the Tree of Knowledge, it does not refer to the Torah of the talking about impurity, for example. Rather, the actual object. When we talk about the tree of knowledge, which has a mix of good and bad, which means a potential for bad, not literal bad. So the, the food can be kosher. The food can be kosher. But it can be used to give someone energy to do something good. Or God forbid the opposite. So that's the food itself. But the Torah that discusses about it, that's obviously 100% purely kosher. For ex where do we have an example of a food which is purely good. You don't need to have a special kavana, a special intention that, it's, that it goes either good or not good, that it's clearly going to be good. That's an example of eating on Shabbos and Yom Tov, that the food, the eating itself is purely holy, like the, like the tree of life, which, which is going to be when Mashiach comes. Then every day will be like a Shabbos. Every, every day will be like a Chag. Okay. And then we finished off in the last class that we talked about the different parts of Torah, namely Talmud and Mishnah, which, which can discuss these subjects which are on the line, so to speak, Talk, can even be talking about something which is not pure. So these halachot and these sources are connected to Torah Shabal Peh, the Oral Torah, and the Torah Shabal Peh is connected to Atsilut. And now, in the, today's class, we're going to discuss the subject of Atsilut, and how we can understand when we, underst that, when we understand the deeper part of the Torah, which is connected to Atsilut, then we'll understand how the Torah can be discussing a subject which is not exactly 100% pure, for example, the laws of impurity, and still be 100% holy. So in order to understand Malchut, let's first discuss, in a nutshell at least, the subject of Atzilut, the four worlds. There are four spiritual worlds. Number one, Atzilut. Atzilut is pure good. Kol kulo tov. Like it says in the Tehillim, Lo yigurcha Evil will not live with you. In other words, with Hashem. In that world of Atzilut. That's the highest world there is. In that world, just as in every world, but that's the first world. We have the ten Sfirot. Chachma bin Adad, the Chabad, in three levels of intellect. And then the seven levels of emotion. Chesed, Gevurah, Tiferet, Netzachot, Yisod, and Machot. Machot is the last one. Now, Malchut, in every level, Malchut is the last one. So, for example, in the next world, Bria, where you start having the potential for our creations, even though we don't even have creations yet, but it's at least the potential, we also have the ten levels. These ten Sfirot, the three Chabad, and the seven levels of emotion. The truth is, within every level, we have ten. So we have Chachma of Chachma, Bina of Chachma, Da'at of Chachma, like we do in Sfirat Omer. We have Chesed, then we have Chesed of Chesed, and then Gvura of Chesed, and then Tiferet of Chesed, and the next week we have Chesed of Gvura, 
a gvor of gvor, each one is intertwined of all. So in summary of what we learned up until now, we have Atzilut, first world. The second world is Bria, creation. The third world is Yitzira, formation. And the fourth world is Asiya, action. Even then, Asiya, it's called quote-unquote action, but it's a spiritual Asiya. Then we have another world, which is a material, our world is Asiya, Gashmi, a materialistic world. Action, right? Action, but a practical action. Uh, and uh, unlike some people like to talk about action, but it's all theoretical. They don't actually do. And, and when it comes to action, it's really important that it comes down, practically speaking, Hashem wants to have a dwelling place in this world. Each one of these four spiritual worlds has ten levels, generally speaking, of the ten spirit. And Malchut is always the last one. Malchut is the one that gathers within itself all of the other nine from above into it, and it's also the one which, which creates and inspires the next world. So that's a very interesting category. It's both here and there. Both in the higher world and ragleha yordot, as it says, its feet, quote-unquote, go down into the next level. Okay. Now, in Atzilut, it's important to remember that one of the interpretations of the word Atzilut, let's first look at the... At the at the Shoresh, the root word of Atzilut. Almost every Hebrew word has a root of three letters. So Atzilut is Aleph, Tzadik, Lamed, Etzel. Etzel is from the word Ha'atzala v'hafrasha. L'hafrish, l'ha'atzil. For example, it says that Moshe Rabbeinu, he, he, um, it, it's funny to say it in a spiritual thing, but, for example, when you say a bracha on the challah, I'm sorry, when you take a piece of, of the challah, so the hafrish challah, to take off a piece of challah. But when you're talking about spirituality, you don't take a piece. When you want to take, when you take two candles, and you want to light the second candle, you don't take away a quarter of the fire. Each, each one remains, each wick remains with an entire, an entire flame. So, it's funny to say that we're taking off a piece. Because in spirituality, you always remain, each party remains with the entire, entire amount. But still, it's still called to take off. So, so Atzilut is so close, it's so spiritual, it's so holy, that all it is is Hatzalah. It's, it's uh, taken from Hashem's spirituality. Basically, all spiritual. So, let's remember this. Hashem is one with Atzilut in a clear way because all the, all the luminaries of Atzilut, what are the ten Sfirot? Luminaries. Sfira is like a sapphire. Sfira, it's, it's a luminary. It lights, it shines up. So the Chochma, Bina, Da'at, Chesed, Gvurat, Tiferet, Netzach, Chod, Yesod, Malchut are all different forms of luminaries and different ways how Hashem shines onto the world, each one in its own way, and different names of Hashem correspond, generally speaking, to these different types of, of light that, that give off uh, from each sphira. So there, in the total there are ten sphira. So it's called, in the Kabbalah, it's called Ihu v'chayohi chad, Ihu Hashem, it's Aramaic. Ihu, and, Hashem and His life, His light, the light of the sphira, are one. And Ihu v'garmohichad, he and the vessels are one. So, what is a sphira? We have like a light bulb. It's hard to give an example for such a lofty concept. But you have a uh, you have a cup, and you fill the cup with something inside. So, so usually it's so then you then you can drink from it. So each entity is made up of a of of a a, a holder, a bottle, some kind of cover. It's called a cloth or a vessel. And you have the light inside. So if you have a drink, then it's a, just a drink. But let's say it's water. So it doesn't take on any color. If the cup is clear, you almost can't even tell if there's any liquid inside. But if it's a cola, then obviously the, the color of, the, of what's contained inside is visible from the outside. So let's say the light of Chachma or the light of Bina. Each one has a keli. Each one has a vessel. 
and depending on what's inside, you may be able, to, if the cup is colored, even if the light is, even if the, the liquid inside, for example, is, is, is clear, it's still going to seem as if the water is colored. So basically, in Atzilut, the ten Sfirot are so great that they're clearly unified with Hashem. That's the bottom line. Ihu v'chayohi chad, ihu chad. Hashem and the light is one. Hashem and the vessels are one. In other words, in a very... Hashem is always one with everything in the world, but sometimes it's not so clear. You look at the bottle, you look at the table, at the hat, book. You can't really see how it's one with Hashem. But when you're talking about Atzilut, it's so lofty, it's so great, it's so pure that you can't... You can't confuse it. You can't. You can't mix it up. It is clearly part of Hashem. It, it, you know, I'm sorry. It's, it's clearly unified with Hashem. Now, here's the question. Remember, we said earlier that Malchut has a double function. On one hand, it contains within itself all of the great light that was <laughs> given off from the previous higher nine sfirot. And then on the other hand, Malfut already has, is already creating, is already uh, inspiring, giving off a Shefa, giving off a blessing to the next world. So, how do you balance this? On one hand, you're basically saying that Malfut is unified with Hashem, because it's part of Atzilut. The main, the main Malfut is Malfut of Atzilut, then it already goes down to different worlds, different, the, the, the different, uh, um, What's the word in, in, in different ways, in different fashions? But what happens when Malchut goes down into Bria? So the, this question is not really when it comes to the first nine: Chachma Bina Dat, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Chesed Vura Tefer Netzachod Yisod. Because the first nine are clearly unified with Hashem. But Malchut, on one hand, is unified with Hashem; on the other hand, it goes down. So what is it? How, how, how does it work? How does it balance? Two totally different worlds, two totally different planets. How, 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 does it, how does it balance it? And then the question becomes even greater once we talk about the Bria, right? We have another 10th spirit of Bria, and the mouth of the Bria goes down into Yetzira. Wow, now it's already formation. It's not just potential for, for materialism. You're already starting to, I, I, don't, I can't identify it, I don't know what it looks like up there. But um, in some way, it's more materialistic, it's more tangible than Bria. Okay, so once again, Malchut is juggling between two different worlds. On one hand, it's the end of Bria. On the other hand, it's creating Yitzira, the next, the third world. And the qu this question becomes even greater when we talk about the fourth world. How can you be in both worlds? You're talking about Yitzira. On one hand, you're in Yitzira. Then, you're, then your feet are laying, are, 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 are already sticking down to the next level, so to speak, as we quoted earlier. So then, what is this interesting? What what, what is this interesting uh, uh, creation, entity, of 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 uh, malchut? How does it balance in each level the different levels? So if you look at the way, it's extremely, extremely Kabbalistic and technical. I'm going to try my best, Bezrat Hashem, in the next few minutes to, to try to sum up the concept. I'll give you a few anecdotes here and there, but I don't want it to confuse anybody. The, the, in the Kabbalah, there are different ways of referring to Malchut. For example, Malchut of Bria, which is the second world, is called Ima. I'm sorry. Let's retract on that. It's called Ama, a maid. Then in Yitzir. Okay. There are technical 
terminology is how we refer to each malchut. Sometimes, depending on, a, on if it's talking about the Arizal or in other places of Kabbalah, how we refer to different parts of the Torah. But at the end of the day, the common denominator of all of the subject of Malchut is that the way that it balances being in two different worlds is by keeping, holding on tight to the original, original um, world that it was in, in Atzilut, and it just puts on a garment almost to be uh, relevant to certain situation. So for example, someone wants to go to Antarctica, where the Eskimos are, correct? So you want to go there, you have to dress properly and hopefully you have enough, you have a, a, good, a good enough uh, clothes to be able to, to be in that situation if it's even possible. So it's very hard to be able to, to keep one's original authenticity and at the same time to be available to, to inspire others. So this is what Malchut is all about. And then we're going to connect it to the Torah, how the Torah, which is compared to the, the Torah Shabbat Peh, the oral Torah is called Malchut. Just like you have this, here's the point, just like you have Malchut, which Malchut is really part of the, the, the original world of Atzilut. And at the same time, through putting on the right garments, it's able to have to do with the next world and to relate to it and to create it and to inspire it. So too, here's the punchline, so too the Torah has, especially Torah Shabal Peh, has a very similar characteristic, the oral Torah, <coughs> excuse me. It has, from the original inspiration of Hashem to of, of the Torah and at the same time it deals with different matters which may seem to be removed from quote-unquote spirituality for example the Talmud even in the Chumash but the Talmud which discusses a great length what happens if my ox gores your ox and my, my ox cost uh, $200 and your ox cost $150 and how much is it worth now? I mean, it sounds all nice, and the Torah is part of our lives, but at first glance it doesn't seem to be terribly holy, this discussion. It is, every word is holy, but it doesn't seem to be. That's why it can be a little bit misleading. Therefore, in our original subject of here, when the Raya Mahamna discusses the subject of Mashiach will come and it says that then we will not have to do anything about the tree of knowledge it doesn't mean the parts of Torah the parts of Torah that's not tree of knowledge because tree of knowledge can imply that we that there are some parts of the Torah which are not 100% pure there's a potential for, for evil there's a potential for interpreting it bad no chas shalom. every single part of the Torah is pure Sometimes it comes in an image it, with, with garments, quote-unquote, that can make it seem as if it's associated with the tree of knowledge. The same thing is by Malchut, as we said earlier at great length. With that Malchut really has its original authenticity, purity, holiness. At the same time, Malchut has a, spe a very interesting characteristic and has the ability to be able to put on all these garments and to, to, to conceal, so to speak, its, its authentic spirituality. And it has to, because if it doesn't, then the next world will not be able to be created. What's the whole purpose of creating a lower world? So that other creations should be able to be created. At Silut, you, you would never be able to have 
of, of a materialistic world in Atzilut. There has to be a process of of uh, of Hishtal uh, Shalut and the world coming from level to level and becoming more and more um, materialistic, less less clearly spiritual. So that's the idea of Torah. Torah is compared to Malchut, and therefore and Torah has the ability to be able to, with all of its pureness, purity, it's it, it's able, it, it has the ability to be able to 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 relate also to day-to-day -day matters and also to materialistic concepts and sometimes even unholy concepts. That's what's beautiful about the Torah. The Torah talks about everything. When Mashiach comes, we're going to see clearly how the entire Torah is pure. The actual impure objects or the or the food, for example, or the, or the other matters which can be potentially pasul, tameh, impure, disqualified, those objects won't be here anymore because it's only going to be a tree of life. No more tree of knowledge. The Torah, the entire Torah, is all part of tree of life, all part of Eitzachayim. So let's read just a little bit of text inside. I'm just going to read the, the English. Now when Malchut of Atzilut is vested in Klipat Noga, Klipat Noga is that Klipa which is a little bit, um, by the way, um, Tzvi, I'm not sure exactly, it's, it's where Eight of Cheshvan, it's Vihinei Ksha Malchut da Atzilut. Okay, very good. Let's start again, the parallel, I'll start again now for the video. Now, when Malchut of Atzilut is vested in Klipat Noga, Malchut of Atzilut, it goes down to create the lower world, which can be a potential mixture of good and bad. Remember the, the Klipa, which is a gray area, which doesn't have to be bad, it could be elevated to Kedusha, in order to extract and refine the sparks that fell with the sin of Adam, as well as the 288 sparks, as the Kabbalah tells us that fell with the breaking of the vessels. It's called Shvirat HaKedim. The concept of Shvirat HaKedim and the elevation of 288 sparks of holiness hidden in the material world is explained in length elsewhere in the literature of Chassidut. So then Malchut of Atzilut too is then referred to as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Not because it is, it has potential for evil, but just because it's going down from its original level in order to be able to create other species which may not be as holy as, as the, the great world of Atzilut, which does not descend there and which um, relative to the Zeir Anpin of Atzilut, which does not descend there and which is referred to as the Tree of Life. So whatever remains above cannot come down. That's a special talent of Malchut to be able to come down and to be able to inspire the lower world. And the investiture of the sphere of Malchut in Klipad Noga is the Kabbalistic principle of the exile of the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah is a divine presence. So the exile of divine presence means that, unfortunately, in some scenarios, the Shekhinah cannot shine as it would like to. The Shekhinah is a divine presence of Malchut. Sometimes it's, it's at home, in Atzilut, in its original state, where it can be revealed with all its glory. And sometimes it has a job to do. It has to go out of its bubble, in Atzilut, and go to inspire others. And so in summary, I just want to mention that this is, uh, it's not just, we're not talking just about a theoretical subject of the holy spiritual worlds and the Torah Shabbat Peh, it's all true. I think we have to take this message into our own lives. That most people view these two things, as, these two perspectives as being two opposites. Seemingly, they all go together. You could either be in the yeshiva and the kolal all day, or you, can, or you can go have a job, and you can go deal with the world, and you can go talk to people. But we learn over here, that it's not, from Malchut and from Torah Shavu that it's not a contradiction. You can have both. Of course you need to practice, you need to learn about it, you need to exercise, you need to try. It's, it's not easy. I agree, it's not easy. 
but it's possible. It's possible to be like Malchut. Malchut is not there just to be uh, uh, to, to be an image of its own. Rather, it's something there to be something that we have to try to replicate. We have to also be like a Malchut. Sometimes we got to be in the bubble. It's fine. It's okay. For example, when a person is younger, a child needs to be protected, needs to be nurtured like a tree. And then it can grow on its own as it gets more mature. That's also part of life, to grow on your own. So if we're mature enough, then we're able to balance the both. I know it's, I know it's difficult. Maturity is not only um, a child, a, an adult versus a child. Also within being, being an adult, also, there are some people that are less mature and some people that are more mature. So when we learn this, hopefully, we, have, we can learn uh, for our own lives in any state of life to be able to balance the two. For example, come to Shul in the morning and Davin, and then go home and bring the light of the Torah to, to your home, to the world, to your business, or you come to a share to a Torah class, and then you go home and you share it with your friends, or you share the YouTube, uh, um, the, the YouTube link. With, with, with other people. So that's a practical way of balancing the two. We, we, sometimes we have to be in the shul, in the Chabad house setting, but we have to also be like Malchus, also to inspire others. Tadarabah, a wonderful evening. Bezrat Hashem. Uh, next week we'll continue. Thank you so much for joining us.